What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are looking at week on chain, week 38, Glassnode Insights. It's a little bit different this week. We'll get into that in just a minute. But before that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Like, share, read the description, go through all of my links, look at all these things I have to offer. I've been doing this for five years now and I think I, I like what I do. Maybe you like what I do. Anyhow, let's get into it. This week, it's not about Bitcoin, right? The merge, a feat of engineering. This week saw the successful deployment of one of the most impressive feats of engineering in the blockchain industry, the Ethereum merge. We explore it as it happened on chain. This week saw the successful deployment of one of the most impressive feats of engineering in the blockchain industry, the Ethereum merge, the switching of the consensus mechanism from proof of work to proof of stake. And it's been on the Ethereum roadmap and actively worked out on since Genesis and is a remarkable mile, milestone for the project. As of the 15th of September at 646 in 46 seconds UTC time at the Ethereum block height of 15 million 537 5037 393 the final proof of work mine block was produced and the proof of stake beacon chain took over chain consensus the merge was successful arguably there is no better chart to demonstrate just how dramatic this transition was than observing the Ethereum mean and medium block times here, we can clearly see the end of the probabilistic and naturally variable proof of work mining and the switch to the engineered precision of proof of stake, sp sporting a consistent 12 second block time. Wow, look at that. In this report, we will explore the historic event as it happened across both trading markets and on-chain blockchain metrics. We will analyze the merge from the following angles. Positioning of leveraged traders in futures and options markets. The effect of the merge transition on consensus parameters. The current total ETH staked in the distribution of staking providers. And modeled versus actual impacts on the ETH supply. Selling the news. In the week 32 report, we described how market positioning across futures and options markets appeared to be well hedged for sell the news style event. Indeed, ETH prices have sold off from a weekly high of 1,777 to around 16,050 at the time of the merge before collapsing to a low of 1,288 on Sunday. The market has effectively given back all gains made since mid July, such a sell-off is the result of multiple factors, not least of which being traders taking profits after East's recent outperformance, being one of a small handful of assets that performed well during recent months in the prevailing macroeconomic conditions. It's quite unsurprising that profits were taken where profits were available. Right? Look at that fall off. Right up until the merge, traders in perpetual futures markets were paying an eye-watering 1,200% annualized in funding rates to maintain their short ETH positions. This is a new all-time low negative funding rate, eclipsing the previous peak of minus 998% hitting during the March 2020 sell-off. <clears throat> funding rates have since completely reverted to neutral, suggesting much of the short-term speculation premium has dissipated. Wow. Total futures open interest declined by 15% from 8 billion to 6.8 billion after the merge, with both of these extremes being fairly typical in the context of the 2021-22 markets. However, to keep this change in context, we must account for the influence of changing ETH coin price, which affects the USD value of ETH denominated futures size positions. If we inspect open interest in an Ethereum dominated basis, we can see that futures open interest is actually at all time high, having increased by almost 80% since early May, 
Over the last week, there appears to have been actually an increase in futures leverage rather than a decrease, suggesting many risk hedging positions have not been closed. Wow. In options markets, where a large amount of recent ETH speculation took place, call option open interest has declined by 600 million post-merge, a 10% decline. There remains a total of 5.2 billion in outstanding call options uh, open position value. Sorry, let's repeat that. There remains a total of 5.2 billion in outstanding call option position value, which is still much higher than the 21 norms. Put option market experience a more significant relative drop of 19%, but this remains a much smaller scale, 294 million in net position value closed. In many ways, it appears that the ETH market remain heavily utilized, levered up, and speculating on further upside despite the minus 22% price correction in the asset itself. The on-chain merge. The end of the proof of work Ethereum era was marked by an immediate decline of mining difficulty to zero after the merge. This process was instantaneous with no wind down period, nor any difficulty adjustments taking place. Revenue for proof of work miners has effectively evaporated, leaving a fleet of GPU and ASIC mining rigs seeking a new purpose. Psh. Now you would not want that to be your asset. It's just the mining difficulty going to zero. In place of miners, proof of stake utilizes a pool of validators which are programmatically organized into sets of committees and block proposers for each 32 slot epic, epoch, however way you want to pronounce that. One validator is assigned the role of block producer for each 12 second slot. However, in some instances, this validator may be offline or unreachable at the time resulting in a missed block. We measure this aggregate validator network uptime using the participation rate metric, which is the ratio between the number of blocks successfully produced, which are not missed, and the total available slots. As the chart below shows, participation rates well in excess of 99% have been the norm for much of the beacon chain's life to date. It will be interesting performance metric to watch as more load is imposed on the chain and more validators enter the fold. In the weeks leading up to the merge, a slight decline in participation rate can be observed, falling below the typical 99% level to around 97.5%. Post-merge, this has reverted back to the 99% plus range, suggesting only a brief, brief disruption to some subset of validators. The number of attestation votes on the chain tip also experienced a brief merge decline but has similarly recovered back to the expected 32K to 38K attestations per hour range. It's possible this reflects node issues with a larger size staking operator or perhaps a software client bug where numerous validators were affected in a short window of time. Ethereum currently has over 429.6K active validators on the network. That's 429,000 active validators on the network. The chart below shows that the last six months where the gradient of new validators can be seen to increase markedly in the lead up to the following the merge, over 11.36K validators have come online in September alone, signifying a growing investor confidence as the technical challenges of the merge are de-risked. When validators opt into or out of the staking pool, they are constrained by a protocol set limit on total validator churn per epic. The chart below shows this cap blue trace, uh, shows this cap, it's a blue trace, alongside of somewhat barcode style chart, which shows the daily change in active validators we can see a handful of periods where the influx of validators hit the limit cap in the past. The recent burst of the new validator activity in September is visible, although it remains quite light relative to the heavier periods seen in 2021. With a total of 429,600 active validators, there is now over 4.8 
1.5 million ETH staked, representing 12.2% of the total ETH supply. The total ETH staked will change over time as a result of new deposits and eventually withdrawals after the Shanghai fork, revenue earned from issuance and fees, balance increase, inactivity leak if validators often miss blocks or attestations balance decreases, and slashing in the event of malicious behavior balance decreases. <clears throat> the total stake balance differs from a new metric called effective balance, which is the portion of ETH which is actively participating in consensus. Effective stake is capped per validator at 32 ETH on the upside and decreases to the nearest one ETH increment below this in the event of leaking or slashing. The total effective balance is currently at 13.8 million ETH, resulting in a stake effectiveness of 94.6%. The majority portion of staked ETH is hosted by a variety of staking services, service providers that we monitor, accounting for 10 million ETH, which is 69% of the total. Top four service providers are Lido, Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance, who manage a combined 8. Approximately 2 million ETH stake account for 56% of the total stake. One of the newest growing staking pools we monitor, Rocket Pool, is a distributed validating node operator competing with the market leader Lido. Rocket Pool remains very small in scale but is growing with 228,000 ETH hosted and representing 1.56 of the total stake so far. Pretty big, Lido's the biggest, and then, no, 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 I guess, sometimes I don't know how to read this uh, chart, but we'll move on. The reality of supply. One of the most talked about components of the merge has been the dramatic decline in supply issuance, which the, when coupled with EIP-1559 burn, is expected to lead to a, de to a degree of ETH supply deflation. Since the beacon chain genesis on 1st of December 2020, Ethereum has actually had two sources of net supply issuance, the proof of work chain and the POS chain. In August 21, EIP-1559 was implemented, which created a fee burn feature on the proof of work chain, a feature which has now moved to the POS chain. The chart below is a suite of traces showing the net daily ETH issuance under various simulated and actualized conditions. It attempts to model and visualize the daily net change in the ETH supply in the time since EIP-1559 was implemented. The area chart displays the actual condition which consists of proof of work and proof of stake issuance with the EIP-1559 burn and accounts for the depreciation of proof of work. Positive values represent in green represent an inflationary net inflationary period, the typical condition. The negative values in red indicate the net supply contraction, ETH supply deflation. Simulated continuation of the proof-of-work blockchain in orange assumes the proof-of-stake merge never took place and assumes two ETH issuance per block, uncle rewards ignored for simplicity. Simulated proof-of-work uh, only chain assumes the merge took place alongside the EIP-1559 release in August of 21, thus ignores all proof-of-work block rewards after that date. This trace now aligns with the post-merge area chart, and that's in blue. It can be seen that the POS model in blue sports a dramatically lower issuance rate of around 772 ETH per day, compared to 12.5 thousand ETH per day for the proof of work model. However, it is noted that net ETH issuance is at present still inflationary. This is primarily a result of extremely low blockchain congestion and low network utilization at the moment. But 12.5 thousand to 772, that's pretty big. I mean, it's like close to 20x difference. Zooming into the one hour chart from the merge event onwards, we can calculate the net supply reduction that has taken place. Between merge and the time of writing, approximately four days after the fact, the proof of work Ethereum chain would have issued approximately 48.4 thousand ETH on net. The POS chain is issued 33,893 ETH on net, reflecting a remarkable 92.8% reduction relative to the depreciated system. Immediately following the merge event, the burst of block space demand did push average gas fees higher, 
which created an initial 12-hour period of net ETH supply deflation. However, as congestion cleared and fees reverted lower, the overall ETH supply has continued to increase, albeit at a dramatically smaller rate compared to the previous POW implementation. In conclusion, the Ethereum merge was a success and a historic one to say the least. Many years of dedicated research and development strategy have now come together to achieve a remarkable engineering feat. The world of on-chain analysis now has a plethora of new metrics to explore and describe the new consensus mechanism and performance of the second largest crypto asset. Of these, the new supply dynamics are of particular interest as the tension and market forces between new validators coming online, which increases issuance, and network congestion fee burn EIP-1559 lean towards either an inflationary or a deflationary ETH supply. Be sure you can come and check these dashboards right here and check out all these uh, different things. Let's, uh, let's click this for a second and look at the supply dynamics if we can. Well, I guess we need to log in for that. So never mind. Thank you so much for following along. This is a very interesting, uh, you know, development. And uh, I look forward to reading next week's newsletter next week for week 39. I'll see you then. Peace.